Hi! Welcome back to another devlog of my VR magic game. It's been a while since the last video, but the project certainly hasn't stopped. Today I have a bunch of technical changes and new locations to share with you. The first thing I want to show you, which I am super proud of, is the new locomotion system. You might be wondering why I decided to implement a new system and what I could possibly do differently with such a simple feature as walking. The old system, which was provided by the AutoHand plugin, didn't use physics-based movement. The problem with it was that the player's body applied an infinite amount of force to anything it collided with, even very heavy objects, which caused them to be ripped away when the player stepped on them. This effectively prevented me from creating blockable areas based on physics objects, which could be only be moved by spells. But that's not all of the issues with the previous system. Due to these specific calculations, there was a situation where the player would jump unintentionally when moving up a hill or stepping on a small object. But that's not the biggest issue. The biggest problem was that in the event of luck, the player could be catapulted from the area, not just simply falling down, but spinning around the map at an enormous speed. With the new custom system, these problems are now gone. I completely got rid of AutoHand and wrote my own solution using the XR Interaction Toolkit. It's still missing some of the features that were handled by AutoHand, such as hand posing, but I can add that a bit later since it's purely a visual thing. I worked on new locations, and in the meantime, I revised and changed the textures of the terrains. Since I'm targeting a low poly style, I don't need much detail in the terrain itself, so I replaced the detailed textures with simple colors. I think it matches the style better now. What do you think? Speaking of locations, I've created two new ones, mountains and a cave. The mountain location is temporary for now, as it only contains the entrance to the cave. I am looking for inspiration on what to add to this biome, so if you have any thoughts, please share them with me in the comments. The mountains are about the same size as the forest location, I will probably expand this area a bit more and create several different caves. Before I show you the cave, I would like to talk about the system I developed to handle the maps. As the areas are getting bigger, we can't load everything at once. Since our resources are limited, we have to manage them carefully. Previously I worked on a single scene and did everything there. But now all locations are separate into their own sub -scenes. And I also have a few helper scenes for managing. I created a new class called Scenes Group, which contains a list of scenes that will be loaded or unloaded in different areas of the map. Ideally, I would like to have more granular scenes, separating the terrain from interactable objects to create a seamless system. The terrains are the first thing that player will see in the distance, so they should load fast. Later on we can load interactable objects, NPC and so on. Let's return to the mountain and the cave. The best mode of transportation for navigating through the mountain is definitely a broomstick. Although the mountains are a bit empty, you can spot a cave entrance along the way. Once you get close enough, the cave interior will load and we can enter. However, we definitely need some additional lighting, as the crystals are not placed densely enough to light up the room effectively. 
fortunately, we can grab this torch to help us on our way. Welcome to the main room. Here you can find treasures and buy some minerals. I am planning to place that kind of altar in different parts of the maps. These places will contain some riddles to quest or special items. Treasure chests will also appear in the world, but most likely we will find them in the caves. This cave is quite big, but the other part is currently under development. I want to create a division of biomes, where the forests will be calm and relaxing, without any dangers. On the other hand, biomes like caves will be high-risk, high-reward areas. I have already placed the enemy spawner in the forest, but it will definitely be more suitable in the mines. While I was working on the cave, I developed a simple tool to help with placement of decorative items. Although these items should remain static, positioning them in the edit mode to look natural can be quite challenging. To overcome this issue, I took advantage of the Unity physics engine. Instead of running play mode and copying the position, I wrote a tool to assist with the placement of object in edit mode. This tool ensures that the items look as natural as possible in their intended environment. Recently, I made the decision to refactor this pen system. It was probably the most challenging refactor I have faced so far, because I wanted to make it as modular as possible in order to handle all possible spells. The old system was very messy. Whenever I wanted to add a new spell, I had to modify a global class in order to make it work. If this spell required additional conditions, things got even worse as it violated the open-close principle. The new system is much cleaner and more organized. I am making good progress with version 0.2 and expect to have all core mechanics included in this release. Once that's done, I will shift my focus to uh, different spells and then move on to preparing a demo for release. If all goes according to plan, I anticipate the demo being ready by the first quarter of next year. That's all for today's video. I promise not to keep you waiting as long as I did last time for new content. In fact, I already have two videos scheduled, but they won't be devlogs this time. Thank you for watching, have a great day and see you next time!